Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. Before we get started, quick housekeeping. I'm already counting on the fact that the internet is going to go bonkers just because it's Thursday. What can I say? So if your screen... See, I told you. I told you it would happen. I told you it would happen. <laughs> so hopefully it already happened. We got disconnected, and hopefully that will be the only disconnection that we'll have in today's broadcast this is coffee and headlines our morning get together live here on facebook where we get disconnected by telmex hopefully again they're doing repairs or improvements uh, but when we are not disconnected and when we're disconnected we discuss headlines from our city our state or in our country we take a look at what you've been up to and we combine all this knowledge to connect with each other and with our destination puerto vallarta as a city that we live in and love and as a community of English speaking locals. Today we have good news and bad news and all kinds of interesting news. We have a report from yesterday's very successful lecture, which was a lot of fun. I'll tell you a little bit about how that went. We're going to announce the new, um, the next lecture and uh, we're gonna take care of a couple of housekeeping things. Apparently, an item or two were left behind, not just one item. What am I talking about? An item was left behind at Whiskey Kitchen. Um, and in case you're missing an item, I have an item that is missing an owner. But before we go there, as always, if you are watching live for the first time, it helps a great deal if you add the word new um, to your broadcast. And I t it's going to be one of those days. It's going to be one of those days. Ah, deep breaths, Paco, deep breaths. Please hang in there. Let's just get started with the news. <music> Maintenance of the Malecon has been approved by Puerto Vallarta City Council. And you may ask, what is so strange about that? Well, in past administrations, all the mayor had to do was simply ask the Public Works Department to go and do the required maintenance work. But for some inexplicable reason, in this administration, the City Council actually has to vote for the repairs to take place. Isn't that weird? Some critics are saying that the process of doing regular ongoing maintenance work in the city is something that uh, any city must be prepared to address, but here in Puerto Vallarta, it has become politicized. Apparently, it is the director of strategic projects who is blocking the repairs, and we don't know why. Maybe he'd like to see other projects happen first. But the bottom line seems to be if the Department of Civil Protection already submitted reports some time ago indicating the risk of not fixing the malecón, why hasn't the work been done? I'm not sure, but news like this bring out the cynic in me, that's for sure. And this other one also brings out the cynic in me. Mayor Michel, along with new Commissioner of Citizen Security and the new Director of Municipal Traffic, 
met with representatives of the local taxi union to renew their commitment to provide excellent service to visitors and locals. Uh -huh. And cynic old me wonders, why on earth is it necessary for them to meet from time to time to do a good job? But don't mind me. The union director, Jaime Aguilar Mejia, addressed some areas in which the current administration could help taxi drivers do a better job, including expediting the recovery of their driver's license and other documents when they are fined for not doing a better job. Another gentleman, Eric Heredia Valderas, representing the city bus drivers, questioned the need of so many topes or speed bumps along the highway south of Puerto Vallarta, which makes traffic insufferable at some hours of the day. Another uh, crocodile was captured and relocated by local environment authorities, this time along the Pitillal Riverside Path. The specimen uh, was already identified with number 530 and was approximately 2.63 meters in length. So that's a long croc. So keep this in mind if you go walking or jogging along the path. You should be fine, but if I was out there, I would probably stay out of the bushes just in case. And this, my friends, brings us quickly into our weather break. Let's see what's going on out there. Well, yes, pretty soon the media will have to put out lists of government officials who aren't hoarding classified documents. Of course, we know this has something to do with what's going on up north, so we won't go there. It's 25 degrees right now, feels like 26. Humidity is low at 43%, and our temperature in Fahrenheit degrees is 76. Our weather forecast for today is we're going to have a clear day with a high of 28 and a low of 17. Tomorrow, Friday, partly cloudy with a high of 29 and a low of 19. And Saturday, mostly cloudy through the day with a high of 28 and a low of 20. And now, let's take a look at a couple of other things that I have here for you, starting with this one here. After many months of waiting, Iku restaurant has finally opened in Colonia Emiliano Zapata. This is the brainchild of Chef Mauricio Leal. And his restaurant was previously located in a second story spot along Francisco Medina Asensio in the hotel zone in the middle of nowhere, actually. And while, But while there, the restaurant gained a very strong following. But perhaps the location was not altogether ideal. So Chef Leal went on to open Flamboyan in Versailles, which is a lovely breakfast and lunch place. We've already reported on this spot. And the new Icu restaurant is located on Venustiano Carranza Street, where Merida Grill used to be located. And uh, I haven't been, but this is a restaurant that's definitely on my list. If anybody has already been there, I would love to hear your comments on the restaurant. But if the food is anything like what they're serving at Flamboyan, I can't wait to go and check it out. Uh, let's see. We have some housekeeping. Apparently, during our meet and greet at Whiskey Kitchen, somebody left behind a perfectly lovely walking cane or walking stick at the restaurant. It is there in case the owner wishes to claim it. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about yesterday. We had a lovely adventure uh, in vernacular Spanish yesterday. My lecture was well attended. There were 17 of you that showed up, which was lovely, for a room with a size of 30. I think 17 was great for a first-time get-together at the new event center, well, new for me, but at the event center at the uh, Joint Co-working Hotel. This is what the room looked like before people started arriving. It's a very comfortable air-conditioned room. And, um, and of course, as I mentioned in the past week, we touched base on all sorts of interesting facts relating 
to the Spanish language, including words like chocolate, which was originally borrowed from the language spoken by the Aztec. It was a Nahuatl word making its way to Spanish and eventually to English and other languages. And of course, the audience was absolutely awesome. We had fun repeating words. And I must say, some of the most colorful metaphors, like the ones you shouldn't use at the dining room table, it was lots of fun to hear all the English speakers chanting them out loud. And uh, I should have made a video of that because to hear a bunch of people crying out, a huevo, at the same time, you know, you, you, you don't see that every day. We had an amazing audience volunteer as well when it was time to demonstrate how the same word when expressed with different inflections can have an entirely different meaning. And of course, we will feature this lecture at some point in the future uh, because it's already packed and ready to go. I don't know exactly when we'll do it again, but we also took time to announce the follow-up lecture. You wanted more Mexican culture. I wanted more music. So our next lecture is, drum roll, great Mexican songs, their composers, their performers, and their stories. Here, We'll take a look at some songs you heard all that you hear all the time, but maybe you don't know a lot about these songs. And then we're going to throw in a few other songs, which I find quite representative of Mexico's traditional folk and pop music, including a couple of rather funny songs that are very popular out there. So this should be a lot of fun. It's going to take place on February 23rd. That is going to be a Thursday. Uh, at the same time, 5 to 6.30, same location, same price. Tickets are not on sale yet, but they should be available by the beginning of next week. Do let me know in your comments if you have a favorite Mexican song you'd like to learn more about. It may already be in my list of 18 songs. I put a list last night, put a list together, and I came up with at least 18 songs that I think would be fun to explore. Of course, we won't have time for 18, but I will find the ones that have the best stories, and those are the ones that we're going to focus on. Focus in, focus on. These are the ones that we're going to talk about. Of course, the International Charro Championship is coming from January 31st to February 5th. There are probably going to be some peripheral interesting things going on at the Malecon. We're trying to get all the details that we can. And I also want to remind you of the Sula Society event at uh, Jardín de la Versalles. This is coming up, I think, a week from today. Yes, on February 2nd. And this is a local fundraiser that I'm not very familiar with that has to do with uh, pets. They have over 300 dogs. So they're going to meet you at this shindig and they're going to tell you exactly how they do the work that they do to keep all these dogs healthy and whatnot. And now let's chit chat and see what you guys are up to. Doo -dee -doo -dee -doo. Oh my goodness, most of my comments are gone. Today was I was not able to uh, to keep them according to my my software. I did lose some comments, but I'll try to find them after the broadcast. Albert says the croc needs to pay a visit to the Telmex office. I tell you. I tell you. <laughs> Betsy Ann says, thank you for a great Spanish lesson last night. Thank you so much for coming. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Logan walks the riverside with his doggies pretty regularly. Logan, it's time to put the girls on a leash, which you already do, of course. Um, Kathleen says, I do hope there's another one. I really wanted to go again. Uh, we'll do it again. I don't know exactly how we're going to go about gauging when is a good time to repeat these lectures, but I will talk to the hotel and just to see if they have any suggestions. Um, Judy reports no water again since 7 p.m. yesterday. I don't know what part of town you are, Judy, but you may want to take a look at Seapal's page on Facebook where they usually announce the places around the city where they're going to have water interruptions of one kind or another. Uh, pam pum pim pum. Mark, who was there and in rare form, says, great class last night. It was so much fun. 
I know that Albert was there as well, and it was so great to hear you guys giggle. <laughs> Let's see what else. Anne says, great night last night. An hour and a half felt like 15 minutes. You know, Anne, I have to say, I get very verbose at these shindigs. And I was wondering about attention span. And in fact, I had originally considered throwing in an intermission at some point. But everybody was so attentive. And, and you're right. An hour and a half just went by very, very quickly. I loved it. I had not conducted any kind of lecture in over three years. And this is the first time ever. No, that's not true. I've done lectures that had to do with non-musical topics before, but not in a long time. I was a little nervous, but I was so happy of the great experience that I've gained by doing coffee and headlines on a regular basis. So I have to thank you all for making me a better lecturer. If there is such a word, lecturer. Um... Let's see what else. La Llorona. It's already on my list. I love it. I love it. Has anyone been to the Judy's Diner that is in the old Amapas Whiskey Kitchen location? I um, have not been, but I know that the owners are the same people that own the taco restaurant that is located on Olas Altas. Uh, tacos. I oh yeah yeah. Now I forget the name of that place. But it's the same owners, and that is the taco place in Emiliano Zapata on Olas Altas is really good. So I suspect that the new Judy Steiner must be really good as well. Uh, there's a question. I wish these lectures were recorded. We would so pay for these videos online. You know, Luisa. I wish they were recorded as well. But it becomes a little tricky with copyright issues, particularly when we have something to do with music. I am looking at ways to be able to share the lectures online. And maybe the thing to do would be to provide a list of the music so that you can listen to it on your own time. I am sure that we can figure out a way to do it. I just haven't found it just yet. And this, my dear friends, brings us to the end of today's Coffee and Headlines. Again, I am so grateful for the opportunity to share knowledge about Spanish yesterday, which is one of my favorite topics. And of course, um, I'm very much looking forward to putting together the next lecture. So this is it. And I'm once again, I'm sorry for the interruptions. They are beyond my control. And, um, and have a great day. I'll be back here tomorrow with more coffee, more headlines, more stories. So have a great one.